Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Jeremiah's J Man Monero with J Man Seminars, and we are here with Millenni Who Talks. That's right, episode number 33. And if you're tuning in for the first time, where have you been? Okay, where have you been? Uh, but what we do is we interview real estate rock stars from all across the country, uh, all, all across the world, actually, to hear their stories and how it can inspire others and help them to be better at real estate. So today we're here with Mr. Joseph Piccinini, and if you need to know how to spell it, it's P-I-C-C-I-N-I-N-N-I. -N -N -I. Am I right? You're right. Am I? Can can I? Can I be seen right now? Yeah, you totally can be seen. Oh, I'm sweet. Gonna, I'm gonna bring your name up here so they get to know how to spell it. I kind of thought of how to kind of like Mississippi, but not really. Spelling it's exactly it. like Mississippi, actually. M i s s i s s i p p. Well, it's not. P i c c i n i n n i. <laughs> but yeah, you did a great job, man. Better than me. I, I can't say like, it depends what day it is. I, <laughs> well, let's um, tell people as you watch this, you know, you can comment below with any kind of question for Joe. Um, if you want to subscribe to the show, we actually have created a messenger bot where if you type in Joe is epic. Okay. <laughs> you will subscribe to our, to our show. And, and keep in mind, if you do subscribe, I'm not going to send you anything except reminders that we're going to be going live. Uh, Joe is epic, I set up. Joe is a dreamer. And Joe P. Okay? So I'm gonna keep it simple. It's all about the guest here on Melody Who Talks. So, Joe, man, let's, 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 let's talk. I didn't send you any agenda because you asked me not to. But, <laughs> you know, we start with, in the beginning, there was Joe. Like, how... How did you get into real estate? What prompted you into real estate? Because you started at a young age. How did I get into real estate? How did I start at a young age? First off, thank you so much for uh, inviting me on Millennia Who Talks, man. Thank you so much. Like, I'm, I'm really excited to be here. I'm a little nervous. My, my palms are a little sweaty. Ah, you're a natural performer, bro. <laughs> that means you're ready. You're ready to go. How did I? So how did I get started in real estate at a young age? Well, oh, that's hot. Whew. That's really hot. <laughs> um, so where did it all begin? Uh, it's a really good question. I was actually recruited into real estate um, back in 2009. I got my first summer job in Southampton. And my one of my college hallmates, a couple of them actually had this, um, had this job out in the Hamptons and it was, it was called Lilybug. And essentially what it was, <laughs> L Lilybug, yeah. Okay. It was a designated driving company or service. And, you know, as as of – how old was I in 2009? I'm 26 now, so that was about – I was about 15, 16. <laughs> I think – I had to be 16 because I needed a driver's license. No, I had to be 17. Who cares how old I was? Anyway. Yeah, you were, you were a teenager. I was a teenager back in 2009, so um, – Freshman year, freshman summer of college, my buddy Mike, my buddy Will, uh, and actually my buddy Reza, we all did this summer job. It was um, my, my introduction to this place of the Hamptons, and I grew up in East Patchogue. So I, I picked out a shirt today. Um, ah. I was going through the closet, and I was like, well, what, what, what will it be? And I, I didn't want to, you know, I'm not comfortable in too many collared, buttoned-down things. So this <laughs> is pretty much, I was grown on Long Island, but I really never kind of was in the Hamptons. I've never visited the Hamptons. And the prom house in college, after prom, that was in Southampton, but that was like, yeah, I don't, that right, was a long right. time ago. We're not going to talk about that. Man. Yeah, no, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> we watched Pocahontas and, um, uh, uh, and, uh, Painted our nails. No, I'm kidding. So anyway, I'm off on a tangent. I got this designated driving job. And basically what we did was if there was one, it was a service. If you had one too many to drink, you would call a lily bug, either a head or, you know, you'd reserve it or, or just call up right away. And we would scoot out to you on a motorized scooter. Oh, wow. And we would, we would, yeah. And we would drive to you wherever you were at a club or at a restaurant. And it was cool. It was like the novel. It was a novelty thing. Like, yeah. Oh, I've got a lily bug tonight. Yeah. I'm, I'm cool. You know? So we would drive to you, we'd fold the scooter up, put it in a bag 
of course, drain the gas out. You have to, I learned the hard way. You got to drain the gas out, put it in a bag, put it in your trunk. Uh, and then we drive you home in your car. So you go out with your car, you get there. And if you have too many to, to drink, you don't want to drive home. So you, I drove you home in your car. That was my introduction. So that was the Ubers of the 90s in a way. The Ubers of the, of the 90s. Is, is that right? Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah, it was. <laughs> It was so cool, though. Like, I met so many people. And it's like, um, you know, it, it's a great opportunity not only to meet people. I, I realized this kind of later into the job, you know. But I was in their cars with them. I'm getting a phone call. Let me silence this. Hello, is it me you're looking for? Is that Lana Ritchie? Yes. Oh, my God. Love it. Hello. It is me. Uh, for. That's right. Uh, hey, Pete, can I call you back in about 20 minutes? <laughs> uh, I, I can. I'm, I'm live on the air right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm live on the air. Yeah, tune in on Facebook. Yeah, tune in. You can see how you're interrupting our phone, our, uh, our live broadcast. The, the price right. on contract is six fifty. While Joe is on the phone, I'm just okay. A second, let's see here. You got it. I'll call you in about uh, an hour. Thanks. All right, you're the man. Bye. All right. I'm sorry. That was a client. I feel really bad for doing that. Ah, uh, well, you know, clients do come first, and they can see how you handled the phone call live, streaming to Facebook to millions of viewers, or <laughs> you know. Five or six. I won't do that again, but let me put it on silent. Okay, cool. So, uh, all right, let's keep you focused now. Are you ready? Yeah, We're please. Here. Thank you. We're live. We're live. On the air. So, my journey into real estate, uh, how was I? I was recruited. I got this job, Lilybug. Um, and then I had tons of other jobs. I bounced around all through college around Southampton and one kind of fell into the next to the next to the next. Uh, it was a deli. It was a toy store. It was, I was bartending. Um, you name it, I did it. And, and I, while I was working in a deli, my broker and one of his colleagues uh, pulled me in and said, Joe, what are you doing after college? And I said, I have no idea. This was like my senior, my super senior year of college. I did five years. Uh, and he's like, well, come into my office. So that day I went into his office with my deli apron on. Um, and, and that was it. The rest was history. I, I, I got my, my license. Um, well, I studied to get my license my last semester of college. You know, I had other finals to study for, but it was, it was, this was the thing I wanted to study for. So I got my license. I took my test uh, and I started. I hit the ground running. So hold on, pause for a second. Is this the college you? <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is college, Joe? This was, this was down in Florida, um, the Buccaneers. Now, what? How old are you there? What? Uh, no, I went to Stony Brook University, but what's interesting is whenever anyone asks you for a fun fact, a yeah. fun fact about yourself, uh, I say, <laughs> I say, um, I have five NCAA, no, four NCAA championship rings. What? That, and I never played, I never set foot. Well, I set, I, obviously I set foot. There's a picture there. But um, I have five NCAA championship rings for never playing football or any sport in college. Well, or soccer. Or yeah, no, no, nothing. <laughs> I played frisbee. I played ultimate frisbee. You know, not professionally, but like on a club or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, no, I never joined the club. But I'm getting distracted. So the whole reason that I I had this opportunity to, well, a big deciding factor for me to go to Stony Brook 
was because I had uh, accepted a job with the athletic department, uh, the football team, and I would film their games. I'd film some of their practices. I'd travel with them. So that was me down in Florida um, filming their game. Hold on. Wait, is this – is this you? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That's me. I uh, where was I there? Filming. That was a scary day, man. It was super windy up there, man. I was like, oh, I, I worry. could just like I I look up to this camera guy and say, Hey, don't worry, I'm Joe from the head. You know, I got this. Don't worry, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was wearing the gold chains around my neck. Yeah, actually, totally. <laughs> hey, people hey, thought I was on a boat. <laughs> picture. I could be. I don't know where I was then. That's funny. I'm glad you sent me all these pictures so that people can see the story behind the story. But you, you did send me a video ahead of time, which was, got, you know, I'm a little bit of an emotional guy. I can cry if the commercial's right. And like that, that story, bro, touched, touched my heart, gave me all Thank the you. feels. You know, it's, saying, well, I don't want to steal the thunder. But tell us if they didn't watch it. If you, don't comment, have it. you need to go watch it. But if not, tell us a little bit about it. Sure. Well, first off, thank you, man. And, and, and if I could just don't ever, don't ever say, um, I'm it's, it's always okay to get emotional. It's oh, we're human beings, oh, yeah. man. we're human yeah. beings, but that is an amazing story. Um, it, it, it changed my life and it, it gave me an understanding for this business, you know, a new perspective about a year and a half into my real estate business. I took, a job at a software company, MindBody. Oh yeah, the gym I go to. There's actually a picture that I sent you of me ringing a sales gong. Oh, um, I have that. You know, a year and a half in real estate, it it takes time, and I think, yeah, there it is. That's me at MindBody ringing that sales gong. Um, <laughs> I crushed it there. The reason I I I, I took that job was because. You know, an opportunity was offered to me and real estate was great. It was going well, but I think I was a little discouraged because I didn't have a business plan. I didn't, you know, whatever. I, I didn't, I didn't have this new perspective that I have now. And I'm so grateful for my body. I worked there for about six, seven months. All my friends, as a matter of fact, from that job have really helped me grow. Um, and I keep in touch with them all day. I mean, every day, almost every, I, every day. But it was that job and it was a sales role. So I was behind the phone. I was cold calling, prospecting emails and I crushed it. I crushed it. But I realized about, you know, two months before my departure, I, I felt it coming. You know, it was the very much behind the desk nine to five thing that I could, I could not do. And I felt it in my soul. And I think, you know, my last month, I, I think I just hit my quota, but I, I didn't, I didn't surpass it. But my, my boss at the time, Abby, she, she was, she, she knew it, you know, and she had a discussion with me and she's like, you know, what's going on? And, and I told her, I said, it's not for me. You know, this nine to five thing, the sales thing, it's not for me. And, you know, they tried to change my mind and I said, no, I'm going. And I think I sold three houses while I was there. I was still doing real estate. Um, I sold about three, maybe, f no, I think I sold three while I was there in that period. Um, but I had a discussion with my broker and he pulled me right back in. The same guy that pulled me out of that deli pulled me right back in full time. And so there's there's some backstory. Now, about a month later, a month later, I'm in this like super receptive state of mind because I did something that everyone kind of told me not to do. Don't quit. You're getting a salary. You're you're part of a really cool tech company. They just went public. You're stupid. Don't do it. I said, you can tell me that. But this is telling me something else. And I have to, and that was the first time I like confidently said, screw this, screw all this noise that's coming at, at me, right? And, and listen to what's in here. And 
I left. Well, we, we know that. So a month later, a month later, I'm, I'm in my office. I was supposed to give a presentation on uh, Zap, which is a new piece of software, was a new piece of software two years ago, Coldwell Banker. Um, and I was in my office. No, no, no. I woke up and I was living in Sag Harbor at the time. My office is in Southampton here. And I said, oh, crap, I, I'm giving this presentation. My hair is a mess. I have not given um, I have not gotten a haircut. So let me get a haircut. Right. But my barber shop was in Southampton at the time. So I, I don't put any I, I put clothes on, of course, but I don't put any <laughs> run out of my house. Thank you. Oh, you put clothes on. That's right. <laughs> I just need a haircut. I put on like a shorts, t-shirts. I put on shorts, a t-shirt, and flip-flops. And I go get my haircut. And the haircut, man, you know how barbers, they just love to BS and talk. And it's good stuff. I love it. You know, the barbershop is an experience. So, <laughs> so much of an experience that day, I forgot how much time I had to give this presentation. <laughs> So I run out of the barbershop with clothes on. <laughs> and uh, I, I have 15 minutes. There's no way I can get to Sag Harbor and put some nice clothes on. If I had thought, I would have brought some clothes with me to change into. Because when you have really nice clothes on and hair starts falling down and you go, ah, it's bad. Right, right. So I say, screw it. I go to my office. I give the presentation. I knock it out of the park. And about... You know, everyone's kind of shuffling out, right? And then I, I'm still there. I've got papers all over my desk. I'm getting distracted. And a couple walks into my office, and I have, you know, I'm, I'm totally myself, right? I'm totally like in the flow, and I'm in this super receptive state of mind because I just did something amazing and left that company, and I'm still in this amazing free flowing state of being, which is really an amazing place to be. Um, so a couple walks in, they say, we want to see some houses, right? So I say, okay, great. It's the middle of August. It's super busy out here. Um, let's see some houses, right? So I pick up the phone. Well, we're on the computer and, and I'm learning about them. I'm learning so much. I'm learning the why, right? And um, I'm going through some houses on the computer and through our listing exchange. And finally we find one that we like, and you know, it's the middle of August and I'm like, let's, let's try to get this appointment. You know, in my head, I, maybe it's an old way of thinking. I was like, let's, let's try to get this appointment. So I pick up the phone. I ask, we get the appointment. So I say, great. This is amazing. Let's get, let's, let's go. So I said, why don't you guys follow me? in my car. And they said, no, well, let's go in your car. <laughs> well, I had just gotten back from a, a, camp, <laughs> a camping trip, a music festival, something. And my car was a mess. It was, a, so I'm like, great, let's get in my car. <laughs> and in my head, I said, shit, I gotta clean this car out. So I run to my car. I pile it in, in my backseat and throw up sandy shoes, blankets, <laughs> old coconut waters, like whatever. All oh, so I was like, great. I take a break, a breath, and we're traveling to the to the uh, to the showing, and I'm giving this awesome tour of the Hamptons to so these people. I have no idea who they are, but I'm I'm not thinking anything. You know, I'm not thinking about anything. We get to the house. The agent opens up in a tie with cufflinks, with like you know. Oh, hey, Kalen, how are you? Kalen Rayner, everybody. Um, he opens it up, and he's got these nice shine shoes on and the belt and tucked in. and like He must have got the shirt tailored this morning because – Right, all HGTV'd out, right? He was all HGTV'd out, which, by the way, I'd love to talk to you about HGTV in a little – whenever, whenever. <laughs> so – Here's this HGTV guy, and then here's me, flip flop shorts. And I say, "Hey!" <laughs> uh, I show them the house; they love it. But 
I had a level of trust, you know, because it's just like if I had just met somebody like if I had just met this plant, you know, if I had just met this plant or a person, let's pretend this plant. No, you're going to say that plant doesn't have much of a personality. Let's pretend I had just met Snuffleupagus. You know, I, did, <laughs> I did not know he was Snuffleupagus. It's just right. a thing. Right. It's, it's it's a person there. It's an right. animal. It's right. Person. right. If you had told me that I would be meeting Snuff Snuffleupagus and taking Snuffleupagus, I just love saying that, taking Snuffleupagus out in my car, I would be a totally different person. I would be trying to be that HGTV guy, or at least that's right. the old way, you know? Right, right, right. Being the agent that you think that they want to see. Right. And I think that's what like a lot of agents get into this business and they think, oh, great, I got to go buy a suit. I got to go get a fancy car. I have to do all this stuff first, right? I was in my Toyota, man. It doesn't matter because I I, I establish a level of trust with with these with this couple. And while I was in that house showing showing them, it, it never like I, I knew I had their trust, you know. And they would ask me questions, and and I I was curating this amazing experience. So. Um, after that house, you know, they're taking pictures. It's kind of like the first Hamptons house tour, maybe that they have seen, you know, I'm just going to end the Instagram live because my battery is dangerously low and I want it to be able to, hello guys. Thank you all. Wave to all of you. <laughs> Wave and live video share. Cool. Uh, I'm going to pull this baby in and. I'm going to say hashtag the worst ADHD I've seen. And I got it. It's like, you hold know, on. I, All right. So Snuffleupagus. Back to Snuff. Snuffleupagus. To so you do the tour. Go through the house. Thank you, Jay, man, for keeping me on track, man. Um, I go show them the beach, right? I show them rest. But here's. Bobby Vans, here's Candy Kitchen, here's, you know, all traditional Hamptons staples. We're in a line to get to the ocean, right? Um, they're from a different, they're from across the country, you know, and we have very amazing beaches here. So it's the middle of August. It's about 10 after 12 at this point, and there's a huge line of cars. So I said, great, let me, let me, I'm thinking like, I just showed that house. Let me, what's your last name? I wanted to register them as my buyers. It's kind of the wild, wild west out here. Um, so I did that, right? I got their last name. And when I was told their last name, he was sitting in, in my back seat and, and his wife was sitting in, in my passenger seat. And when I, when I heard their last name, I said, holy cow. And, and this huge shot of adrenaline just came over me. And I said, you are this person. You are this person. Right. Not, you're not Snuffleupagus, but you are this person. And I couldn't think because this person was the person when I was when I was very young, um, I would go to Disney World all the time with my family, and we still go. We haven't gone in a while, but we will go again very soon. Right, Mom? Where's Mom? Huh? Dad? Um, right now, they're saying yes, Joey. We'll go soon. Thank you. Anyway, so my biggest dream in life was to be a Disney Imagineer. Right? These are the guys that. I have a book somewhere here. These are the guys that create the experience at Disney World, at you know Disneyland, all across the globe, at all their parks, you know, and and they really create, they curate that experience. And 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 for me, you know, all the resorts, the attractions, the everything parks everything design there's so much design that goes behind that to to invoke feelings and, and to really put on a show and, and make people feel yeah. you know when i was probably 14 
And I said, I know every single Disney Imagineer by name. I know what they do. I know what they've worked on, right? But let me let me let me let me try something. So I wrote an email to the head of Disney Imagineering at the time. And I forgot about the email. A month later, I got this. I got this. Just don't want anything to fall. I got this. Okay. I got this. The most frightening thing in the world. This is a sketchbook in the mail. I got it at, at my doorstep. I got a handwritten letter from the from the guy that I wrote an email to. It's actually here. I got a handwritten letter from the guy. And let me put this down. And that changed my life. This sketchbook is a sketchbook that every Disney Imagineer gets their first day on the job. And Ten years later, I am in front of a beach. I had just had the opportunity to curate an experience like the Imagineers may, may, may be like the Imagineers do. Not even close. My car was filthy. <laughs> but I had this opportunity to create an experience for this this, this was him in my car. This was the guy that I wrote a letter to. This was him in my car. And uh, that was it, man. That, that, was, that changed my life forever. It was that. And, you know, that, that was, I don't know what else to say. That was it. What did the letter say? It said, uh, Dear Joe, thank you for all your enthusiasm and, and, uh, your th thanks for your observations and your enthusiasm for Disney and Imagineering. The enclosed book is the brainchild of Marty Sklar, a man who worked started working for Disney um, right out of college and eventually became head of Disney Imagineering. Um, blah blah blah. Um, while he doesn't still have that role. His instincts about the blank piece of paper still hold true, right? So what is the blank sheet of paper? A blank sheet of paper can be the most frightening thing in the world, or it can be the greatest opportunity in the world. This book of great opportunity is dedicated to all who dream the big ideas and those who have the courage to fill these blank pages day after day. So that changed my life as a 14-year-old. And... I don't know. It's like when 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 things feel right, you know, they can feel right to all of us at any time. But this was like, holy cow, man, things have aligned and I, you're in the right time and place. And what you're doing is is right. And that has carried through over the last two years. And I I know it will continue. So I'm I'm sorry for taking up. I'm a. <laughs> Of course, I'm getting a little emotional too, but um, I hey, want you to. I uh, want to. A, wise, a wise man told me earlier today that it's all right to get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, cool. Thank you, Jay, man. Thanks for letting me share that story. I want to requote re -quote this correctly. A blank sheet of paper can be the scariest thing in the world, or it can carry the greatest opportunity. Is that what it, it is? Uh, it, uh, the most frightening thing in the world, the blank sheet of paper. Blank sheet of paper can be the most frightening thing in the world, or it can be the greatest opportunity in the world. Love it. Every day is a blank sheet of paper, you know, and, and when you go down, when you open up a sketchbook or a diary or whatever, it's like we may have this fear of where to start. But just start, man. Just just start. All right, I've got a lot of good nuggets here. I'm trying to get it all in. Like, like just repeat that for a second so everybody can think. Just a quiet moment of reflection wherever you are on this planet Earth that you start every day with a blank sheet of paper. Right. Amen. Like that's opportunity. It can be the most frightening. 
Can I share one thing? Matt Case, who is Matt Case, that Colville banker, uh, he gave a um, – do you know Matt Case by chance? Does anyone? Um, the name rings the bell, actually. Right now. Matt Case. If I, yeah, if I go to a different tab, Matt Case, Coldwell, Anchor, I, 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 I. Vice President of Learning. At least that's what his LinkedIn profile says now, Matt Case. Oh, I'm not connected? Come on. We got to connect, Matt Case. There we go. Now we're connected. Matt Case said this once. He was speaking. This is probably three years ago. He said, if I can leave you with one piece of advice. Tomorrow, when you drive home, instead of pulling into your driveway, back back in to your driveway. So the next morning when you get in your car, you start your day moving forward. Uh, I love it. Yeah, that stuck with me, man. That's like and I, I, I back my car in every day, every night, mainly because <laughs> I just want to be able to make a quick getaway if I need to. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but, I, but I like your reasoning better. It's just like... You know, every day you, you start moving forward. Let, let's talk a little bit because I know every real estate journey is different and not everybody start, you know, I feel like there's too many people out there that go, I started in real estate and I was gangbusters. I sold a bajillion dollars overnight. Like what's the real story? Like what was this, you know, what were some of the struggles you oh. overcame and the challenges you overcame being, I mean, you're a young guy in yeah. the Hamptons. Mm -hmm. There had, you know, where I, I started young, there's always like, listen, kid, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I imagine you, you encountered a lot of that. Like, what was that like? Tell us, tell us about it. Great question, man. There were, there were struggles, man. There were struggles. Obviously, I guess enough struggles to be confident about taking a job in software, you know? Um, everyone says, get a business plan, get a business plan. And that's what I was told my first day, my, my new age and orientation. I didn't get a business plan. Um, and still to this day, I don't have a business plan. And it may hurt me in the future. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't feel that way. And I'm not saying a business. I'm not telling everybody not to get a business plan. Business plans are crucial, right? Right. If that's the way, like I work, we all work differently, you know, but I was broke. I was broke as hell, you know, and, and, and it was tough because I was living elsewhere. Hey, Patty. Not out there, Patty. Um, I, after college, I, uh, you know, I, of course, was living on my own. Actually, I was living, I had some roommates too, but it was still hard. So I bartended my way through, but I had this goal. I had this goal. And, you know, it was, I was a little discouraged because I didn't quite get it. I didn't quite get the magic formula. I just thought it was like, listen to a Tom Ferry course, you know, go get trained. Where do you get the money to get trained? You know, the result is something like my, my, or the, not the result, the action, the, the solution. My broker taught me this day one. Action is the, is the solution. Action. Pick up the phone. You know, but but don't give your don't say I need to do 100 calls a day. I need to, if I don't, I'll be a failure and I won't get any listings. That's the question. How do I get listings? Right. Every single person. Oh, how do I get a list? It's easy. You. You. You just get the listing, right? But but there's so much else that, and it's all about <laughs> it's all about perception, you know. I'm gonna take my Apple Watch off because I'm getting a little distracted. Um. <laughs> uh, what else? Do you want I'm gonna bring this up because I like to just get the listing. Let's talk about that just for a second. Okay, so because I feel like the power of positive thinking is so real. There's so many agents that say like, oh, I hope I'm, I'm going on a listing appointment today. I hope I'm going to get this. And it's like, I'm getting a listing today. I'm bringing my lockbox. I'm bringing yep. all the paperwork that I need. Yep. That's what I'm going to do. 
right? Yeah, exactly. You're so right. If you say, first of all, I hate hearing anybody say I can't, right? You legitimately can't do something if like I can't or I can. I can eat this fake plant. <laughs> I won't eat this fake plant because I'll maybe in the hospital in uh, 20 minutes, right? The same goes. The same thing goes for that question. How do I get a listing? I can't. I can't make 10 phone calls. But maybe 10 phone calls isn't the solution to getting the listing, right? If you, if you, But if you think about it this way, how can I connect with somebody and provide a, a valuable service to them? Okay? I will, well, I won't say that. But I will not work hard on convincing some, somebody why they need a real estate agent. If they don't, fine. Go sell your house yourself. Good luck, man. Good luck. And maybe you'll do it. But I'm not going to waste my time telling you why we are valuable, right? But anyway, I'm off. <laughs> I went on a tangent. Where am I, J Man? Keep me up. Keep me back on track. <laughs> well, we're, we're just talking about ways to overcome challenges in the beginning. <clears throat> like you're the young guy. You're the young I'm guy the who's young not born and raised in the Hamptons. Let's say that. I didn't. I knew nobody. I knew my deli customers. I knew the people that I drove with Lilybug. You know, I, I knew I knew some people, but I don't have I didn't have roots here in the Hamptons. But I learned it doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter where you are. It's who you are and what you can provide. Right. So, oh, right. Meet as many people as possible. Right. That was kind of my goal. Right. And so I would my drive and my motivation for picking up the phone. The phone was just a vehicle to meet people and to develop a relationship with them. The key or at least my magic formula right now and i'll share it with everybody i'm, I'm like like daryl davis like and i'll share it with everybody do you want to know what it is i love daryl davis he is such an amazing speaker and jay man i have not gotten to see you speak yet someday soon uh, someday soon man i'm anyway. speaking right now actually <laughs> <laughs> yes you are what am i saying yeah um so the phone was the vehicle. Knocking on doors was the vehicle to meeting people, you know? Yeah, was, my first door that I knocked on was frightening, but I did it again because why not? Right. You know? I mean, I, did you die? No, I did not <laughs> die. <laughs> it was alive. It's amazing. <laughs> I love this. And my broker feels the same way. And I learned, I, I learned, I learned a lot. You know, if you sit, if you sit at your desk, like I know some agents that will sit at the desk, sit by the phone, sit by the computer right. and wait for something. Oh, I, I, I'm a real estate agent now. My phone's not ringing yet. What? Hello? J-Man, hello? Can you hear me? I'm at, my phone is actually ringing right now. Did somebody pick up. call you saying they saw your, they, they're watching your live broadcast? I won't pick it up. Um, <laughs> Well, he's going to say, oh, okay. okay. See, now I'm back on track. One of the things that I feel is one of your greatest strengths, you may not realize this or not, but it's your ability to build rapport, right? Like, I think that's your strength. And I think that's a strength. But I say this to all agents getting started anywhere. Like you went into a market, a luxury market, where if you're not from there, they don't want to hear from you typically, right? And that's the perception. That that yeah. that could be the perception. Could be the perception. But really, if you come in, you're a real person, and you just talk to them like normal people, and you're you're not afraid to talk to anybody. And and like Daryl Davis says, you know, sales is a contact sport, right? Like <laughs> yes. Like you gotta get to talk to the people in order to to be in business. Let's, yeah, let's talk about. I have a photo here that I feel like is one of the best photos ever taken of somebody on stage in the history of the world. Um, hyperbole <laughs> side. Okay, I want you guys. To, hopefully, you're watching this on your computer, not your phone, so that it's you know go full screen right now. You see Joe. He's accepting <laughs> an award or something. This might be your imaginary book. I think it is. Might yeah. be it. But the, but the, but the <laughs> cool here. Her facial expression. <laughs> oh my goodness. We like this guy on stage. <laughs> you know, you know what happened? Can I can I share what happened? Yeah, totally. 
video, <laughs> that video that is posted on our both of our Facebook statuses or uh, on our news feeds promoting this millennium episode that was shared. It was debuted. I was behind the screen watching it, and there were seven thousand, almost eight thousand people. Hey, Rachel, there were seven or eight thousand people in the MGM Grand Arena. Penn and Teller had just left the stage, and I was like this with them. And of course, I said hello, and they just kept walking. <laughs> <laughs> they literally did pull a bunny out of a hat, but they did the classic trick, but they made it, you know, they, they freaking killed it. So I saw this video from behind me. Like I was like this because the screen was so huge and I saw it inverted because it was, I guess, projected on. I saw the other side of it, you know, and I was crying when they opened up the door. I was crying like a little baby, right? I did not for once think, um, how am I going to do this? How am I going to get? I was nervous. Hey, Jake. How are you, Jake? Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, I was not, I, and not for once did I think, holy cow, how am I going to go on stage? with 8,000 people because I felt at that very moment it was it was right and it was meant to be. And this always calls back to an improv course I took in college, Julia Gibson. Julia Gibson? An amazing, amazing uh, influence on my life in that improv class because um, she said on the first day of improv, everything you do is right. Everything you do is right. That stuck with me, and I, 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 that I'm calling back to that, and that, that is deep, deep here, you know. And and I was out on stage anyway. I'm I'm kind of navigating through the whole experience as it as it happened. I get out on stage, and um, Tori beforehand, and I missed. Oh my God, I missed the dress rehearsal that morning. No way. I did. Are you getting a haircut? I, w <laughs> <laughs> I was not getting a haircut. Uh, yeah, maybe. I, anyway, I was trying to improv there. Yes, and but no. Yes, I and right. Um, I go out on stage, and and before Tori had asked me, that's Tori, by the way. She is. I don't know her exact title at Colville Banker, but I'll I'll, I'll I'll share that with you. Yeah, Tori. Coldwell Banker. Tori. Ketchinger, Senior Manager of Brand Marketing for Coldwell Banker. Where am I? I lost the screen. Tori called me up the day before and she says, or, or actually this was like three weeks before, prior to this very moment on stage. She said, I want I want to ask you a question. Of course, we're going to premiere it, but you know, I want you to share a little bit about it. And she's like, we're thinking to ask you what your favorite Disney movie is. Rachel said that during breakfast. I was. <laughs> <sighs> I said, what my favorite Disney? I said, mm, nah, I don't want to say that. So I said, can I tell a joke? This very moment is the punchline of the joke. And Coldwell Banker, our... One of our mottos, our slogans... Or, or, the core of our company is, of course, blue. And well, the core of our company is home. Um, but that's displayed in blue, of course. Uh, a very powerful color. Very, very powerful color. Anyway, I'm like, well, this the, the conference is called Gen Blue. We're Coldwell Banker Blue. We, we bleed blue. So let me tell one of my favorite jokes ever. And anyone watching will probably know what I'm going to. Please don't spoil it in the comments. I'm going to tell it right now. What is blue and not heavy? Light blue. But um, um. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was me. Light blue. And Tori was like, ah, yeah, we should get him off stage now. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, that makes sense on that that whole. <laughs>
That's hilarious. Oh, did that, yeah. What question? What did I answer? I mean, I, I, I forgot what question we were. We're just, we're just chit chatting. We, we got about five minutes left, so let's uh, let's talk about tips for new agents. Tips for new agents. I want you to hammer something home. If you're not, I'm gonna bring you to it. it sure. Might happen. But what do you feel are some of your key successes in in you know being in the business for so long? What do you feel your keys are? I might sure. have mentioned in the bio. Sure. Mm. One thing that I'm learning, what, I'll tell you right now, what works for me, and I'm not going to say I've got it all figured out because I don't have it all figured out, but I'm very confident in the way my business works and the way I serve my clients right now. And my magic formula right now, and I'll share it with you, Daryl Davis style, but wait, there's more. No, it is... My, my magic formula is trust, knowledge, and authenticity, being yourself. That is my magic formula. And if you are, to any new agent in the business, if you are trying not, if you are trying to be someone else, maybe HGTV style, if you're trying, maybe that guy showing me the house wasn't completely HGTV style, but that was my perception, you know? HGTV glamorizes this business. It's it is hard. It's hard work, man. It's hard work. But any new agent in the business, think of yourself as how can I provide so much value to the people that I'm serving? And and how do I how do I gain their trust in order to do that? Well, you be yourself, right? I love the Grateful Dead. You can see my friend Alex painted that for me. And I have not yet to find a place to hang it because it's so special, right? Craig well, is special too. You don't want but to move the Kramer photo. I, I, you know what? I'm moving the Kramer photo. No, don't do it. No. no do it. Oh, Kramer just got put on the couch, everybody. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. <laughs> everybody has a passion. Everybody has has something that makes them, that something that gives you the chills, right? What is it? What is it? Ask yourself that before you decide to get into the real estate business. Or if you already decided to, ask yourself, what gives you the chills, right? For me, it's music, it's people, it's laughter, right? I love the Grateful Dead. And I've probably seen over a hundred not Grateful Dead shows. Of course, I was five when Jerry Garcia died, but that is kind of like that's what gives me a reset. That's what brings so much joy out of my life. And think about this as a real estate agent. The money will follow, right? The money will follow. If you think about the money first, you're, you're, you're not, you're in it. You're in it for the wrong reasons. Absolutely. Because if, if you think about, well, let me get this into contract now, how can you get something into contract when there's so many moving parts that is the wrong way to think, right? How can I help everyone involved? Think of yourself, new agents, as a, you are the director on stage of an orchestra. And every single, and I think we talked, we talked about this, Jay, man. We did a live yeah. last week. Yeah. Your job, and if anybody tells you that you, you open up a door and you get a commission check, don't just good, turn your head around and keep walking, really. Think of yourself as the director of an orchestra. I love music. I start band back up. I play the trumpet. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Bam. The downbeat is... Anyway, you are conducting. And just like maybe you're conducting an experience for your clients, you... Ah, man, you you are in charge of every single... You're, you're keeping tempo of everyone on stage who is creating an amazing experience for everybody watching, whether it's music, whatever you direct, right? For me, I see it as music. <laughs> yes, that's me, Wall Street, dead ahead. Um, we're an amazing networking group, family. They are family to me. And I was there last night with my buddy Reza, who just got his real estate license. He is, he is in Westchester, New York. I'm so proud of him. Oh, nice. I'm so proud of him. Anyway, you are... 
keeping tempo of attorneys, buyers, sellers, you know, mortgage lenders, you, you, your clients have a goal in mind, right? Always ask them the why, always ask them why, why is it you want to, you want to move here? Why is it you want a house? Where, where do you want to go? Find out that why, and then you will, you will, you will, you will, you will, you will place the downbeat right there. When, once you know that why, you immediately start keeping tempo. I hope that answers, I hope that helps new agents. I really do. Don't think about it for the money. Don't think about it. Don't think about getting that nice car because you're going to make a lot of money in real estate. Don't, don't do it. I've been, I've been courted by a company out here that I, I didn't, it didn't feel right. It didn't feel. Well, we, it's, it's a theme that kind of keeps ringing again and again through all these talks that we've been doing these millennial who talks where, you know, focus on the relationship, not the sale, because that's more important. You focus on the relationship first on your client, the sales happen, the money comes, all of that will happen as a byproduct of, of that, that trust, that honesty, the integrity, and, and being authentic, just like you said, 100% being true to who you are. You know, people can see that. They want to see that the guy that was interviewed on Millennium Who Talks is the same guy that's going to show him a house tomorrow, is the same guy that they see at Facebook, it's the same guy they saw in the city performing last night. Like, <sighs> the same person, right? And yeah. in, in, in closing, I want you to have a talk with yourself here. <laughs> <laughs> Say... To this little guy and all the little guys that are some somebody somewhere right now is saying you know what i want to be a realtor i want to be a real estate agent i want to change lives not just selling houses we change lives we do so what what do you have to say to this little guy and all the little people big people and new agents getting started what's just one thing one thing in closing find your passion Find your passion. That's it. Find your passion. Whether it's whether it's real estate, whether it's basketball, whether it's fishing. I had a conversation with somebody the other day and they said, I feel like I'm fishing too much. I feel like I'm missing out on other things. I said, do you love to fish? He says, yes, I love to fish. If you were fishing from now until the day you leave this planet. Well, you never really leave the planet. You, you, you're, you're still the planet, right? I don't want to get on that yet. Um, you, you go, you go to heaven, you, you go wherever you go, but would you want to fish until that happens? He says, yes. I said, well, what's stopping you? You found your passion. Is this your passion? He says, yes. Fear, don't fear. I mean, I can't say don't fear, but recognize how much fear can push you farther and farther away from your passion. That's what I'll right. do. We've created a hashtag here. It's hashtag FYP, find your passion. Keep in mind now, if you want to subscribe to Millennial Who Talks, in the comments below, just comment, Joe is epic. And you'll subscribe <laughs> to our... Our messenger bot will let you know when we're going live again. Uh, Joe, I just want to thank you. And if you're watching, we have you know a bunch of people still watching live. Comment below where you're from and any other additional questions for Joe. We'll reply back to any of the comments. And we're going to post all the links to the additional videos that Joe kind of referenced in, in our talk today. But Joe, man, thanks a lot for your time. Really appreciate you opening your heart to the world today. Uh, thank you. you know, you're, you're a great guy. I'm sure everybody can see that. And you know, future clients will probably watch this and and pick you as well, right? Thank you, Jay, man. Thank and thank you for for you know, it's thank you for showing us that this is your work, right? This is what you do is your passion, Jay, man. You take the time out of your schedule every week to do this. Yeah. You know, it's not work. Is it's not work for you? Do I don't think any we I don't think we have to ask that question. No. You know, no. it's not work for you, man. I can't wait to see you uh on october 11th uh for for tech fair and i can't wait um 
Can I do a shameless plug of our YPN? Absolutely. October. I'm sorry. Next week on the 23rd, we are at Palmer Vineyards. Um, look at my Facebook. Text me. Call me for more info. Well, you can put it in the comments. Um, I'll put it in the comments. Yeah. That's going to be fun. And and I'll see you up at NYSAR, man. I just booked my room. Just booked my room. It's going to be fun. All right. We are out, everybody. Make it a great day. It's Friday, which means nothing in real estate, except we have another couple more days to help the architects of the American dream. Be sure to listen often because we are – Inspiring others through real stories from real estate rock stars from all over the world. Next Friday, you should tune in. We're, we're waiting on confirmation, but we're going to be interviewing an agent from South Africa, Cape Town, South Africa. Nice. Like I said, so it's, it's worldwide. And uh, thanks again for tuning in, everybody. Have a great day.